We turn our reading to the gospel according to John chapter 6, verses 35, and then we'll jump on to verses 41 to 51. And uh, if you choose to follow the um, Pew Bible, you will find it on page 96. And any one of you who are at the worshiping with us from home and will need a Bible, please let the office know. If you go to the website, you will find the web, um, web address, our church's email address, and now uh, send us an email saying, hey, we need a Bible. We'll be more than glad to drive by or um, have you come by and pick one up. Okay, John 6, 41, 35, then 41 to 51. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hung be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the father who sent me, and I will raise the person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Now that everyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God, he has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Let us be in prayer. Oh God, you are the bread from heaven, who in Jesus Christ, we are invited to be part of this community here online who are live streaming to hear your word and remind us that you are the bread that's everlasting from heaven. May the word of my mouth and the meditation of, of, of our hearts be glorifying to your holy name. Amen. There's a little story that I read a long time ago, and you know, it's one of those things where you read something or you hear something and you see something and you just remember it. And um, the story is about a little boy at a bath four, five, six years old, and uh, there's a storm outside, it's thundering, it's raining hard, and uh, uh, lightning, and the little boy gets scared. So he cries out for his father, and the father hears the boy and says, okay, let me go and see what's going on, goes to his room, and the uh, little boy says, I'm scared. There's a boogeyman under the bed. There's somebody, there's a boogeyman in the closet. It's scary. It's, it's, the, 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 the thundering is just scaring, and I can't go to sleep. And the father says, it's okay, it's okay. I'll, I will pray, and you'll be fine. You know, God is with you. God is with you, no reason to be scared. So father goes to bed. And about 10 minutes later, the same thing, daddy, daddy, I'm scared, I'm scared. So the father goes and uh, comforts him and prays for him and reminds him again, God is with you, don't be scared. And this goes on for about two more times. Finally, the little boy goes, daddy, I know that God is with me, but you know what? I want a God with skin on. 
a God with skin on. This is the second week of about five weeks of the scripture reading that we find from the lectionary on the bread of life. Last Sunday, we looked into Jesus being the bread of life and claiming that he will be the one who will seize all hunger and thirsting and that we are to hunger for Jesus, a deep hunger. So if you haven't heard that sermon, it is in the archive, which I think is wonderful because it goes back about two years. So if you are on the app, you can go and check it out. And I know that you can also find it on, um, on YouTube. So we hear about the Israelites eating of the manna when they were going through 40 years of traveling through the desert. And they were given this manna, and God said, you can only take as much, only as much as you need. So every morning they will wake up and they will see this powdery substance all around the ground. And the families would go and gather the manna and make the bread and eat it for the rest of the day. And on Saturday, uh, because it is the Sabbath, they were for Saturday's meal, because it is a Sabbath, they were to take double the portion the day before so that it will last them for the Sabbath day. But what is it that happened? It was a good fix. They're hungry. God gives them manna. They're only allowed to take as much as they needed because if you took more, what happened? They will wake up and whatever leftover they had, it spoiled. It was no good. It gives a different, a new meaning to the whole prayer that we have. Give us this day our daily bread. That was only a temporary fix. On the other hand, spiritual hunger for the bread of life is desirable, not only desirable, but it's essential for a life lived out in the love of God. As the Israelites grumbled for food, which God responded by giving them manna, there is a similar comparison in the story in John, because the Jews also complained about Jesus. Their main complaint is that Jesus claimed that he is the bread that came down from heaven. Read the scripture again, and that is exactly the reason that they were complaining. In the earlier story of the boy wanting a God with skin on, is what is revealed in this second section of the bread of life. They were disturbed by Jesus saying that he is the bread of life from heaven, from heaven, not from the oven, not from the ground like the manna, not from the refrigerator, not from the, be be the bread pantry, but from heaven. In this, the Gospel of John emphasizes Jesus' divinity more than any other gospel. Although they all profess it, John really emphasizes about Jesus being the bread of life. And this is what gets them upset. And they say, they murmur, they complain, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Don't we know his parents? Joseph, his dad, is only a carpenter, and his mother, Mary, poor peasant girl, and you know, with a questionable past. How can he claim to be the bread from heaven? They concluded that he has not come from heaven because they know his parents. Familiarity is breeding contempt, my friends. One who has been among them cannot possibly 
be what Jesus claims to be. Hard to believe. Ordinary yet divine. But Jesus answers them, I am. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Or in other words, I am God incarnate sent by the Father to spiritually feed and nourish whoever is willing to acknowledge God and partake of God's gift of salvation, life through me. To be more concise, Jesus is saying that he is God with skin on. Whenever we are troubled and feel like life is out of control, and we want a God with skin on, that is Jesus. We may not believe in boogeyman like the little boy of the story, but there are just so many scary things out there in this world. Illnesses, wars, emotional instability, spiritual warfare, personal conflicts, And in Jesus, we have a God who is aware of our physical, emotional, spiritual needs. For Jesus knows our experiences. Jesus walked our walks. Jesus lived our lives. But we need to acknowledge that Jesus is the bread from heaven and accept it for Whoever believes that he is the bread from heaven has eternal life. Okay, I'm going to let you in in a little secret. I'm a big fan of the band U2. I love U2. Yes, I see some of you going like this. Some of you are like, Ugh. it's okay. But one of my favorite, favorite, favorite songs that really touched me and helped me understand the ups and downs that I went through in my early 20s and 30s was the song that goes like this. And don't worry, I'm not going to sing it. You'll be happy. But I am going to let you know the part that really touched me. It says, so, um, uh, but I still haven't found what I'm looking for. That's the song that I'm looking for. <laughs> and uh, um, it is a beautiful, the lyrics is pretty much about a confessional, about uh, um, the belief of the singer. But there's a portion that says, that goes like this. You broke the bonds and you lose the chains, carry the cross of my shame. Oh, my shame, you know I believe it, but I still haven't found what I'm looking for. It speaks to that spiritual hunger that is deep inside of us, even as we are seemingly satisfied with the things of this world. It sings of the spiritual hunger anyone might deal with, even those who are sure that what Jesus has done for them. There is still a sense that each of us may know and trust Jesus, but sometimes we still feel ourselves searching, wandering, looking, and waiting. Yet, still Jesus invites us to come, for we will never be hungry. Have you found what you're looking for? Are we driven by the deeper hungering of what is eternal and and fulfilling? Or are we stuck with the manna that is a temporary fix and will rot? Sarah Miles' book, Take This Bread, is one of the best description of a person coming to terms with that very notion that we need more than what we think we want. And in her story is the coming of faith, to faith, and in understanding that God is who he says he is, 
the bread from heaven. So this is the story of her taking care of her dearest friend who named Millie, who is in the final stages of cancer. Her body still fighting for with the radiation and the chemotherapy. Millie was not only physically ill, but she's bitter. She wasn't pleasant to be around, and taking care of her was taxing Sarah to the point that she was physically and emotionally exhausted. Sarah tells the story of how she went to prepare Millie for some toast, the only thing that she could stomach when she finally broke down and had to admit God, help me, she cried out. And in between her tears, as she's breaking up the toast, she begins to imagine that that is sacred, to that breaking of the bread, the body of Christ, like Holy Communion. And this is what she wrote. What makes the bread into the body of Christ? What makes words more than words? Moral flesh more than moral flesh. What makes a piece of toast into a sacrament? I broke the bread. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise those are the words from the Holy Communion she recalls in her, in her heart. Then she said that it was chanted every Sunday at the table, and she recalled that. And then she wrote this. I knew the words by heart now. And something was in the kitchen with me. Like the sunlight falling on the braided rug, like the piece of bread in my hands, warm and alive. I wasn't alone, she wrote. This wasn't the end. I take the toast back to the little room where Millie had propped herself up with a couple of pillows. I could smell the wisteria faintly through the open window and hear the kids from the school next door yelling in the yard. I pushed away a box of Kleenex and sat down on the bread and said, Millie, this is for you. In half an hour, I will tuck her in. I will set out a glass of water and drive home across the bridge, stunned and blinking, and saying aloud to myself, Oh my God, it's real. Oh my God, it's real. Towards the end of the scripture reading today, Jesus mentioned two times that he is the bread that came down from heaven. Maybe they needed to hear it again and again. And maybe, just maybe, we need to hear it as well. One more time. From the bread of heaven, we are to find strength where there is no more strength. Hope where there is no more hope. Life when life seems to be no more. When we feel that God is far and distant, Jesus invites us to a life that God helps us to do and live what we cannot do alone. Change ourselves and change the world. For that is the call of our, of our United Methodist, uh, uh, the, the general conference motto, to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And speaking of making disciples of Jesus Christ, I, be, I believe that it begins with us. Becoming followers of Jesus Christ so that in, through the bread that comes from heaven, we might be empowered to change ourselves, the world around us, by sharing that bread who is Jesus, who is always ready to bring salvation.
from whatever it is that we are bondaged to. Take, eat. This is my body which is given to you, it is said, to nourish us, to sustain us, and at some point in our lives, to help us to grow in God now and always. You see, in verse 50, I'm not going to get really technical here, but in verse 50, Jesus says that the bread that comes down from heaven uses a continuous present participle. In other words, the Greek translated in the continuous present participle is that the provision does not stop. It's continuous. It goes on and on and keeps feeding us and nourishing us and sustaining us with no end. And that same goes for whoever believes in verse 47. Participation in eternal life begins even now through our continuous act of believing. So as we continue believing in the promise of abundant life that comes down from heaven, I encourage you to be the people who extends Jesus to all. Make no mistake, Jesus only is God with skin on. But we are, as John states in John 17, verse 8, 18, as you sent me, as God has sent Jesus to us into the world, Jesus says, I have sent them, us, into the world. You may be the only Jesus that some people ever get to see. I want to share with you this Victorian plate that was created around 1850 by Augustus Pugin. The message says, waste not, want not. This is a reminder to all of us, of all our needs are met in Jesus. The bread of heaven, the bread that came down and took on our flesh in order to meet all of our needs. Waste not by eating his life and death and becoming like him. And find that we want not, meaning that we don't lack for a life of purpose and meaning. So right now I'm going to show you the three slides that we showed you earlier. This one, can you share, can you? So as you're watching these three slides, see if you see a, family, um, a commonality. What do you see that is common, except for the bread? What else is there that is a commonality? Do you see in these three pictures? Can you go through those again? There. Anybody notice what's common? Shout it out. I'll give you a hint. Hands. Thank you. They all have hands. The hands carry the bread. And at the very end, we have a baker having made, baked some bread. As a little boy but I was afraid of the dark, his dad was an extension of the comfort that he needed as the daddy extended Jesus' love. The father shared God's love in the bread. As Sarah shared of her taking care of Millie and finding out how God is real in Jesus Christ, she shared the bread with Millie. We are called to waste not the gift of abundant life given to us. For in Jesus, who is God with skin on, we want not of anything. Now and forever, be the hands that will share 
the bread from heaven with everyone as God shared the very Christ who is our own bread. Amen?